Hello and welcome to this lesson on bond enthalpies. Now, if you remember in the last lesson, I said that we need to be able to break bonds and form them back again in a overall reaction. That's what that's what always happens. That's what usually happens. And for us to break bonds, we need to input energy to break them. Okay, it's a bit like interfering in a relationship. You need to put energy into that relationship to break them apart. So let's say that this was carbon and this was hydrogen. We need, looking at the table over here, a bond enthalpy of 414. Oops. Ah. We need it of 414 kilojoules per mole. And that's the amount of energy we need to break that one bond. Obviously, we will need 414 to break this bond, which is C to H, and that bond, and that bond. We also need enough energy to break these two carbon bonds over here. And as we can see here, carbon to carbon is 331 kilojoules per mole. And all we do, we add them all up together to find out how much energy was actually needed to break all of these bonds. And then to reform them, we do exactly the same. We find out the bond enthalpy. Okay, and remember, this has to be in a gaseous state for us to be able to break bonds and to reform them. Everything has to be in a gaseous state, even water. Now, in an exothermic reaction, the bonds which are formed in the products are much stronger than what was broken. So let's say that this whole thing, we required 2000 kilojoules of energy to break these bonds. So inside the system right now, we have got 2000 kilojoules of energy because that's what we inputted into the system. When we, when we formed bonds, we lost energy. And if the bonds are stronger, that means we have lost a lot more energy than what was put in. So let's say minus 3000 kilojoules per mole. And that means we have got a net difference of minus 1000 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and that is why it's an exothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction is just vice versa. Um, the energy that was put in when we broke it was more than the energy that we lost when the bonds were formed. Let's say this was 1,000. That means we have got a net of 2,000 kilojoules per mole. Again, exothermic, negative. Endothermic, positive. Now, how do we calculate it? When we get this in an exam, the first thing that we should always do is to draw the bond lengths or to draw the displayed formula because if we're trying to find out the bond enthalpies it would make sense to actually draw the bonds so CH4 looks like this H H H H and as you can see an oxygen looks like this doesn't it but the thing is we have got two molecules of oxygen so we need to draw two of them like that now we can see we have got a C to H bond here. And we've got four of them. One, two, three, four. So we need to have a look at the data, which is C to H, which is plus four on four. And we need to multiply that by four. Same thing here, oxygen, the O to O. We can see that it is, it is plus plus. 497 and we need to multiply that by 2 because 497 kilojoules were needed to break this bond and 497 kilojoules were needed to break this bond so we need to times that by 2 so I'm going to quickly do that so we have got uh, 414 times 4 to make 1656 remember please remember the sign please remember the positive sign because you would lose marks if you don't. Same thing here, uh, 497 plus 2 is 994. So the overall energy that we put into the system to break up the bonds is 2650. So that's the amount of energy that we 
needed to put into the bonds. Now, we need to do exactly the same for the products. We need to do carbon to oxygen like that, even though it should it should be uh, it should be straight like this it should be linear like that and we need to do H2O like this which is a bent 104.5 and this as well again I've drawn two of them because it says here two now we just need to find the bond enthalpies of that so the C to O bonds which we need to times it by two because there's two of them is C to double bond O, 803. We need to multiply that by 2. The O to H, we need to multiply that by 1, 2, 3, 4. O to H is plus 463. Times that by 4. And I'm going to write down the result here. Okay, so I have um, multiplied 803 by 2 to make 1606. Same thing with 463 times 4 to make 1852. The amount of energy that was in the products or the amount of the bond enthalpies of all of the bonds in the products ends up to be let's add it up together 1852 plus 1606 3458 so thinking logically we have gone from an energy state of 2650 to 3458 now the equation that you need to remember is the sum, which I can't draw for some reason, is the sum of the broken minus the sum of the formed will give us our overall enthalpy change. So what we need to do, we need to do two, oops, two six five zero because that is the sum of it broken minus oops I forgot what number was three four five eight to make minus eight hundred and eight and you can be sure that you got the right number because it's a negative sign and it is exothermic again it can be endothermic so do watch out but this is the formula that you need. And that is it for this session.